there booktube it's Janet and I've got a quick update of the rest of the books that I read in March. First of all I've got to show you is Flawed by Cecilia O'Hearn and I picked this up as part of the Irish readathon that's been going on in March and I've had it on my shelves for quite a while and at first I put it on my to be read pile and I thought oh, I'm not sure if I feel like reading it but I thought no go on it's been on my shelves for ages and I'm so glad that I picked it up because I absolutely loved it. It's the first in a duology by Cecilia Hearn, and she usually writes um, contemporary fiction that always have some sort of romantic uh, undertone and I do actually like her books so I was quite happy to read a book by Cecilia Hearn, but I just wasn't sure if this was for me but oh my goodness it was so good. Um, it follows Celestine and we don't know what this world is. I, th I think it's more of a dystopian world that, that we're in and what has happened is that because of historical poor decisions made by people in power, for example like the banks collapsing and those sorts of things, that there is um, a layer of authority underneath the government called the Guild and the Guild is responsible for rooting out people who make poor decisions so that basically everybody behaves in a perfect way and if you don't behave in a perfect way you are flawed. Now when you are deemed flawed by the guild you don't go into jail or anything like that what you do get is branded uh, and you can see on the back there's a, a picture of what you get branded with and there are various parts of the body where you can be branded you can be branded on your temple which i think is if you've, you've made bad decisions you can be branded on your heart i think that's like bad conviction or bad actions can't fully remember you get branded on your hand if you're deemed to be a liar um you can get branded on the sole of your foot and is that five one and you can also get branded on your tongue as well if you don't speak the truth or you're a liar I think. Um, so there's five places basically where you can be branded and up until now Celestine has been perfect. Um, she's the daughter of um, a very powerful father and mother. A mother is a model, her father is head of a, the local news network and they all work, live in this close proximity with um, Judge Creven, who is head of the guild and he's basically like the media mogul as well, he owns the newspapers and the, the, um, the TV stations and he's an incredibly powerful man and they are all together for um, a, a family meal with their friends and neighbours including Judge Creven, for Earth Day celebrations and they are waiting for one of their neighbours to arrive. Instead of the neighbour arriving they hear a big commotion in the street and the whistleblowers arrive. Now the whistleblowers are people who um, check up on you if you are deemed to be flawed. They also um, are people you report people to who you think are behaving in a flawed way. So they turn up in a big load of show and apparently um, and the, the, the neighbour across the street who is a family friend, uh, the mother is deemed to be flawed because her mother, her mother was dying of cancer and went to Switzerland to take euthanasia and the guild deemed her actions as flawed because they don't agree with euthanasia so she's taken away and branded and it's quite a horrific experience. So it starts to get Celestine thinking and she starts to think actually she was a really nice woman and I think that what she did was out of love and compassion for her mother and supporting her mother's right to choose and so she does get thinking and to the point where she gets thinking about are people flawed or are they just human? If you are flawed you have to live under a curfew, you have to, um, ex you have to expose your flawed branding whenever possible um, but also you have to have an armband with an F on so everybody knows that you're flawed um, you are segregated. You can take part in society but you're segregated and you don't get the opportunities that you do. You even have a very restricted basic diet that you have to have so basically you're punished for the rest of your life and I absolutely loved it. I tore through it 
I found it incredibly well written, incredibly pacey, I loved the characters in it, so much so that I am in book jail again, I've been in book jail all month um, because I had to buy Perfect which is the second and final book in the duology because I needed to know what was happening um, but I'm okay because even though I'm in jail I am reading it now and I'm just over halfway through and we'll be finishing it today and it carries on where the first book left off and it's all seriously hotting up and getting very exciting and I am absolutely loving it. So if you want uh, a bit of a dystopian kind of um, fast pacey uh, read that is just you know not a very very long drawn out series these duologies thoroughly recommend so I will be finishing that very soon. The next book I've read, which also got me in jail, but I've read it, is um, Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, Volume 2, by two Italian writers, Francesca Cavallo and Elena Fabili. And it, I'm sure you've seen these books all over everywhere on Booktube. I just enjoyed Volume 1 so much that I wanted to carry on and I absolutely love that you just get a snapshot of a woman, some you've heard of, some you haven't, but the, their life and how they um, have become absolutely um, iconic people and you also get the beautiful artwork that goes with it so I'll just show you one and this is Simone Veal and she was a politician so the stories of women all over the world so I really enjoyed that one so it was worth going to jail for. The next one I've got to show you is again part of my Irish readathon and this was I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell and this is 17 Brushes with Death. I think this has been nominated, was it a Costa Prize? Not sure, I think it's been nominated for a few and I think it was in the, I think this has also been in the Welcome Prize shortlists. I think I found this quite I found it quite a difficult read for in, in a lot of places because um I seriously worry for Maggie O'Farrell some of the experiences that she's had in her life um, some of the brushes of death are far more serious and unnerving than others but um there's been two instances in her life where potentially she could have ended up very very hurt or dead um by you know some unpleasant people um, I just found it like my heart was in my mouth reading it maybe it is right that it's got a heart on the the front um, and I just found it I was completely shattered by the time I'd finished it because I was so anxious and worried for it and I just think just it made me think just don't go out of the house um, so it's a, it's a good read it's a quick read but it, oh my goodness it did worry me a lot a book I also read as part of the Irish Readathon, well I didn't read it, I DNF'd it, was Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. It's an 18th century book. I had it on audiobook, read by David Hyde Pierce, who I absolutely love as Niles in Frasier. I did about a quarter of it, um, which is all the bit about Lilliput and stuff like that, but I just couldn't carry on with it. I think, you know, just the style of writing from that time. There's just so many words around the story that you kind of get a little bit lost in it. So I did give it a go, but I DNF'd it. The other audiobook that I loved, which I completely finished and absolutely adored, which I did as part of, again, the Irish Readathon, was Lady Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde. It's a really short play, and I listened to the whole play by full cast on audiobook, and I just absolutely loved it. It was only a couple of hours from beginning to end. Uh, it's a little bit about social prejudice and scandal amongst the middle classes and I really enjoyed it so that was a great one for me and um, so that was another one to tick off on my Irish readathon list and then another one I read for my Irish readathon was Making It Up As I Go Along by Marion Keyes. I've had this on my shelf for quite a while um, and I've read everything that Marion Keyes has ever written. I absolutely love her books and this is just a collection of her journalism. Some's been previously published, some has um, is not and it's new, is new in the book. Um, quite a hefty book, but I absolutely flew through it. Um, it's laugh out loud funny. Um, just Marion's tales of her family, her travels, her attitude to makeup, and yeah, 
um, absolutely loved it. It's really great. Um, you can just dip in and out of it, but I read it from cover to cover and it made me smile. And then finally, as part of my March Mystery Madness reads, I read Knots and Crosses by Ian Rankin and this is the first book in the Rebus stories. You probably have all heard of Rebus because the, there's been loads of these books out. There's been television series made of Rebus but this is the very first one and it's set in Edinburgh and Rebus in this book is a detective sergeant and he's investigating some very, very unpleasant child killings. Um, the girls are all sort of very young. I enjoyed it. I liked the premise of it. Um, I just found that it was quite slow paced, considering even though it was a quite short book. Um, I'm sure it must get better as the series goes on. I found Rebus himself, although there's a, he's obviously suffering from PTSD because he, has, he is an ex-soldier. Um, I just found him, he started to get on my nerves after a little bit because he cries a lot in it. <laughs> and I know that sounds right, really hard hearted, but there was a point where I just went, oh for God's sake, <laughs> pull yourself together man. So yeah, I can't give too much away about the plot because it would sort of spoil, there would be spoilers there, but I did see what was coming. Um, and it hasn't put me off the series, it's like a solid three star read, I enjoyed it, um, but yeah, I, I won't actively seek out to continue with the series, but I wouldn't also be put off it either. So that's where I'm up to with my reading so far. Let me know if you've read any of these. Let's chat in the comments down below. I'll see you all soon, booktube. Keep reading. Bye!